Hello, so welcome to the Zoom F8 tutorial. So what we're gonna look at really are just the basics of how to work with this recorder. So inputting mic, setting levels and monitoring them. So first off, let's just start with powering up the Zoom F8. So press and hold down the power button. So currently we have one microphone in the Zoom recorder. The dials here are jumping up and down. These meter readings are just giving you an indication of your general audio levels. So, so the volume levels need to be between minus 12 and minus six to be effective dialogue recordings. Now, obviously you can go to zero, but provided they don't peak, your, your sound won't distort, uh, which means you've actually given yourself the widest possible latitude for your sound device to work. So first off, let's go into menu. Let's hit menu. Uh, you'll notice we want to we want to first really go down to SD card. We want to format the card. So the F8 has a, a dual SD card uh, uh, capability. Uh, the Zoom only ships with one SD card, but if you have a second one, you can put a second card in there and then uh, record the dialogue simultaneously across both cards if you choose. If we look. Uh, here right now, currently we have a shotgun mic plugged into channel one, uh, and you can adjust it with this fader here, the volume up or down, okay? And that determines our overall volume level of that microphone, okay? So if you're not generating uh, a nice peak in sound like we have here right now between minus six and zero, uh, then you will have to adjust your fader and increase the input gain, okay? So this is called the input gain where you're increasing the, the signal uh, to increase the volume of the dialogue. Please always try and record your dialogue between minus 12 and zero, ideally. Try not to have it go any lower than that or else you will encounter problems um, in post. Now, you could boost that in post. You can do it in Premiere uh, through the audio gain, but as a result, that's gonna introduce hiss into your soundtrack, which is something you don't want because that's gonna reduce your audio quality. So now that we've got the zoom powered up, we wanna to go to menu and we want to scroll down to record uh, because now we want to set our, our recording settings. So sample rate, uh, set that to 48 kilohertz, okay? Uh, and then press menu to go back and set your WAV bit depth to 24, okay? Uh, this will give you the highest quality recording settings available. Uh, just as a double check, go to, uh, go to Rec to SD1. This is your record settings to your SD card. So you can have a secondary SD card in there if you wanted to record two sets of files simultaneously, uh, which are exactly the same. So um, as default, you should just set it as a, po a polywav and that will record. So if you have more than one input, it will make sure that it records each track separately and independently. However, uh, if you are recording potentially just one track, then uh, with one input, so say just a shotgun mic, selecting left, right, poly wav, uh, mono stereo wav, or just left, right, standard traditional stereo wav. These could be your norms. So if we just set that and then hit menu, we can come back. Uh, we've now set that. So another neat little trick here with the zoom is that we can also set something called a pre-rec mode. Okay, so the pre-rec mode uh, allows you basically to record a prescribed number of seconds. So in the case of the zoom, you can actually have a pre-roll of six seconds. Um, so uh, when you start rolling, it'll buffer before that six seconds of audio recording prior to you pressing record. This could be quite useful in a documentary situation. This also could be quite useful if perhaps you missed the announcement of the slate. As another, uh, another good top tip here is if you're not getting any sound uh, in your recorder, despite you plugging in uh, uh, an input, say a microphone, uh, it's probably because there's no phantom power uh, uh, that's been put into the microphone. If this happens, you have to turn on the phantom power. So phantom power is when the de a device like the Zoom F8 sends power and electrical current to the microphone because in many cases, microphones like the NTG 2, 3, or 4, they are not battery powered themselves. So in order for them to actually uh, pick up sound, they need power sent to them okay, from an external source. So this is what phantom power is. So hit menu, 
and go to input and then scroll down to phantom and then we want to make sure voltage for all inputs is set to plus 48 volts and then scroll to input one and turn it on okay and then hit menu to go back another interesting thing to note here actually is the more inputs you turn on like for example input two if you have that on uh, it, it will also cause drain and stress on the battery, on the VLOP battery, which will cause it to obviously run out quicker. So we want to make sure we just turn that off. Another interesting feature about the Zoom F8 is its ability to dual record. So currently, if I go through the jog wheel here, I can actually scroll into other menu systems here. So this is this, for example, what we're seeing here is an overview of Channel 1's recording, but also D1 is a replica of Channel 1, and that's set to dual record. So currently, if you look at 1 and 5, they are matched together, signified by these red LEDs. When this has happened, uh, they, they work in vertical seek pairs. That means 1 is paired to 5. So what's happened here, if we look at the fader on 1, we've got the fader kind of almost at 12 o'clock uh, on channel one, but on channel five, the fader is at three o'clock. Uh, and if we look over here, we can currently see on this VU meter that the D1 audio level is currently peaking. That's because the fader here has been increased quite substantially over channel one. So what dual record does in this sense is you're actually recording the same sound but either slightly higher at a higher dB or in many cases at a lower dB. So the beauty of this uh, and where you may want to use this feature is if you're maybe potentially recording a, an argument scene and say two characters are shouting. Now you may have set channel one to be quite high. So obviously if actors are shouting, you might end up getting a bit of clipping uh, at the top end uh, of your audio, in which case, that sound, just like video uh, or film, is going to be clipped. It's going to be a sound that you cannot use or be, it'll take more work to rescue in post. So the, the function of the dual channel record is that it records the same audio track slightly lower. Okay, so to access that, you want to hit menu. You want to go to uh, record and you want to go to yeah dual channel rec. Okay. So it's underneath your recording settings. So if we go to dual channel rec, input one, dual channel record is currently on, okay? So in this case, I don't particularly want it because I just want, to want one track for ease of use. But if you feel that you need to use it, it is there to be used in that case. So if when I go back to menu, notice D1, the mirror of channel one no longer exists. That's because we've deactivated it. So again, see it before, rec, dual channel rec, and then you can activate dual channel record in any of those functions, okay? So uh, we looked at, so if we scroll along with this, we can come through all the different summary menus. If we go back to our main menu, um, we have got shotgun mic running in through channel one. Uh, we also have input two, which is live as well. And you can see that it's live there. Uh, we've currently got no mics plugged into it, but if you were to plug in a lapel mic, for instance, we have armed that channel. In this case, uh, we can now plug a source into it. Bearing in mind, you also have to uh, phantom power that, depending on what source you put in. Because we've got nothing in there, we're just going to turn it off. And that's how you just press the actual channel number to turn that off. So on top of your, your faders here, um, so your input gain, you've also got uh, volume for your volume controls for your headphones. Please don't confuse the two of these, okay? If you do, you may end up trying to compensate for sound by increasing the sound to your headphones, uh, in which case it's gonna make everything sound much louder in your headphones. Um, please always uh, judge your metering with the faders here okay with the input gain here uh, to judge your sound levels okay so uh, we're going to turn off channel five as well because we're not dual recording so if we go to channel one you can actually also use this jog wheel to if we press down uh, whoops we can actually if you notice uh, you can actually scroll through the different faders here and we can set an additional line level uh, on the 
um, actual channels themselves. So you've actually got fade digital faders here. So if we hit that, we can actually plus or minus additional signal, so decibels, to the sound. So you can also control the faders there. But I would suggest, so once you've set them here, so preferably, maybe as a good starting point, start at zero. Press the jog wheel again. Now just start with altering the sound levels with the faders here first. Um, another top tip with the FA is if you want to isolate one channel from all the others, hit PFL. PFL stands for pre-fade listen, and that just isolates that one sound of that one device uh, through your headphones. It disables everything else. So obviously to hear everything else it mix down, just hit PFL again to come out of it. And on the subject of um, isolating uh, what you hear, uh, you can control what you hear in the headphones. So final tip, if we go to output and we go to headphones, we can go to headphone routing, okay? So in headphone routing, notice you've got a number of different channels here. So we've got the channels one to eight, which are your inputs, the left and right stereo mix, which we monitor and hear, and you've got these M1, M2, S1, and S2. These are main and sub mixes, which you can output out of the side of the Zoom 8 recorder. So unless you're recording to another device or outputting a mix somewhere else, this really isn't hugely important for us right now. We just want to deal with what we hear here. So uh, all tracks are marked uh, with the, uh, can be can be earmarked specifically with pre fader or post fader. Pre fade listen. So unadulterated, unmixed, uh, unleveled sound. The post fade option is basically the, you're listening to the sound which has been affected by the faders themselves, okay, by the input gain. I like to set my left and right channel mix to post fade. So I set left channel to earmark red, and I set the right channel earmarking it red as well. Now, normally, uh, we could in this say in this sense, if we wanted to see what it sounded like pre-fade, we could also nominate channel one in blue, which disables the post-fade option. Now, uh, we'd be hearing the left. We'd be hearing channel one uh, through our headphones separately. So, if we had one mic, that's what we'd be hearing. Uh, if we had two mics, we'd only be hearing the microphone from channel one and not channel two. But for me, uh, with headphone routing, you'd want to probably hear the total sound mix overall as it's coming. And then you can always individually later hit pre-fade listen and then uh, see what each of the individual tracks sound like. So to record, hit record. Uh, and it will just go straight for an audio take. So obviously when you're finished, press stop, it'll save. Now to access that, you can press play and it'll play back what you have just recorded. So let's stop that and then come back. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, bye-bye.